thanks, Susanna, for that great overview of uh, what's happening in the, the world whiskey market. Okay, I'm going to talk more about uh, importing and distribution and some of the challenges that we face. So 13, 14 years ago, um, I got out of the corporate world and decided I had an opportunity to import Amrit into the U.S. I uh, didn't know anything about the whiskey business side of it. I knew about whiskey. Um, so started from nothing uh, with one brand, and uh, I'll tell you all the other ones we have. So currently we import Armroot Waterford uh, from Ireland, Bimber, which is a small London, England distillery, um, and then some other unique world whiskeys and some other brands. So importing and market access. Um, what so t I was saying 12 years ago, there was little market presence or awareness of world whiskeys, as Susanna pointed out. And in 2010, we introduced Amrit, the first Indian single malt whiskey that was ever exported out of India. That doesn't mean that they were not making single malts in India. They were, but using them mostly in, in their blended whiskeys or their higher end whiskeys. And then we brought in the first English whiskey, uh, the English whiskey company, and the first Australian single malt, uh, Sullivan's Cove. So we were really innovators in a lot of things. Um, we had to focus on consumer and market education because a lot of people, you know, they go, India, why is India making whiskey? You know, I don't, people, people don't, don't, don't drink there, right? And I'm going, well, they're actually the largest consumer of whiskey in the world, as Susanna said earlier, and there's a lot of demand for it. And now, um, when Amrit was first introduced, for example, it was export only. And people in India were saying, well, where can we get this? And they were told, you have to leave the country to get it. And now the demand exceeds at five, uh, the demand is five to one for supply. Um, TTB obstacles. When we first started importing Amrut, um, we had to send full bottles to the TTB lab for testing. Um, I don't know why they needed a full bottle, probably. You know, they probably knew, didn't need to test all of it, but I'm sure somebody was enjoying the whiskey. Um, and that was only so it could be classified. There is still to today, there is no classification of single malt whiskey that the TTB has. So at first they wanted us to call it a uh, straight malt whiskey. And I said, what the hell is a straight malt whiskey? You know, nobody's, the consumers aren't gonna know that. So after going back and forth, they said, okay, it's a malt whiskey and you can use the word single. Um, but we had to do that with every, all of our other world whiskey brands uh, and then we you know, worked with the TTB to finally do away with that restriction so now you don't have to send them for lab approval. And then the other thing was getting distributors and retailers on board. You know, 12 years ago we had three, we were distributing in three states. Now we're in 47 states. Um, we've got distributors that are retailers that have whole sections of world whiskey. It's becoming a category that they're showing that you know, there's all these whiskeys from around the world and Susanna showed a whole bunch of those. So world whiskey today is still a growth category. And um, so we have India, England, Taiwan, Australia, France, um, and so many other countries that are developing. There, you know, there are, there's recently I came across a distillery in Argentina. Uh, there's one in Bolivia, which is actually the highest distillery in the world, elevation wise and so many other places that are making it, but the cost to get product from them over here is so expensive. Uh, and they can sell it so much in the domestic market. And then the other bigger challenge we had was getting consumers, to, or sorry, the distillers to say, you have to bring in 750 ml bottles, which was a real challenge for them because it meant investing in those size bottles, having to fill those and be able to bring them in and they still don't understand why we can't have 500 ml bottles in the US. You know, we can do it in wine and other stuff, but for spirits, we can't. Um, but now, as of last year, when they changed it to 700, that has opened up a lot more opportunity because now the only country that mandates 750s is uh, South Africa. So there's a lot more opportunity to, to bring that in. It makes it a lot easier access to market. Um, and I think one of the things that are really important are transparency and authenticity as market drivers. All these distilleries have to really be transparent about what they're doing, where they're getting their product from, uh, where they're distilling, what the distilling is all about, and uh, showing that they're very authentic in what they're doing. 
So as I mentioned, local flavors, um, Amrut, for example, for their classic single malts, use Indian barley. Indian barley is six row rather than two row that's used in uh, most of Scottish whiskey making. And that gives you a different style and a different flavor profile. Okay, so what's gonna happen tomorrow and beyond? This is my sort of uh, crystal ball forecasting. Um, I think brown spirits are gonna continue to grow. It is a huge category. And within brown spirits, I'm not just including whiskey. I mean, rum, you know, everyone says rum's the next big thing. We're starting to see trends of that happening. And I think we'll see more of it. Um, and I mentioned riding the Japanese wave. Uh, you know, 20 years ago, friends of mine who um, worked for Japanese distilleries or Japanese uh, brands had to go door to door convincing bars and restaurants and retailers that, no, this is not made from rice. This is a single malt. It is made from malted barley. Uh, ironically, today you have rice whiskey uh, from Japan that's available in the market. Um, but today, everyone wants Japanese whiskey. The price of Japanese whiskey has gone up multifold, and it's, just, you know, it's getting out of the reach of consumers. So consumers now are looking for other world whiskey, and what else is happening out there? Uh, what else can I get access to? Uh, we're gonna see, continue to see more entrants, uh, more now. There's four or five brands from India. Uh, England has half a dozen single malt whiskeys available in the US market. Australia continues to grow. Um, New Zealand will be, they've got about three distilleries that will be releasing single malts shortly, this year or next year. Uh, France is a huge category. You know, there's, there's I, I can't even count, I mean, France and Breton alone is a large producer of whiskey and a large consumer of whiskey. Uh, Germany, I didn't mention, and China now. Um, the first Chinese distillery is up and operating. Um, I was approached by them recently, and you know, I'm not sure if I want to venture there or not yet. Uh, and then I think continued education, transparency, and authenticity, what I mentioned, are really important. I think making, you know, there's, it's still, there's a lot of consumers that do not know that whiskey is made in other countries. They think, oh, it's Scotland and America, and maybe there's Irish whiskey, but they're still thinking Irish whiskey is like, you know, we shoot it or whatever, but there's such quality, world-class whiskey that's being produced all over the world. Uh, and I think it's important to, to do that. I do a lot of blind tastings where I'll, you know, have whiskeys from around the world and we'll taste through them blind and get people to try and figure out where they're from uh, and veil them at the end. And people are always surprised at the quality that comes out of some of these world markets. Uh, this is just some of our brands, um, if you see them. The one in the middle I didn't mention, that's uh, Hammerhead from Czechoslovakia. It was made during the communist regime. Uh, I was able to purchase um, a single barrel from them when it was a 28-year-old, and now we have a 30-year-old. Uh, it's got a lot of history behind it. And uh, in equity, down at the end, there's uh, an Australian single malt. So thanks very much, and uh, we will entertain questions after, and I'll turn it over to Josh.